Welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. October 30, 2020, the Wells Fargo Struggles Edition. And we begin with the um, story from the Washington Post about Trump's crackdown on EEOC and diversity training has uh, raised a fierce backlash from a wide variety of groups, business, nonprofits, and civil rights. Of course, it's illegal in a company who engages uh, in failing or fails to give such training really puts themselves under uh, scrutiny, particularly if um, there's a change in administration. Nevertheless, his white supremacist and racist agenda uh, allowed this to happen. It's going to be unclear what will happen to any of the individuals in the government who um, led this uh, campaign, but clearly their actions are um, illegal under current law. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see. And when businesses and nonprofits denounce the order, you know that uh, it was a serious misstep. But once again, that's the Trump administration. Next up is the college football is being pushed to the edge with COVID-19 as Wisconsin had to shut down its program for, uh, it's not unclear how long, uh, at least a week, but... <clears throat> Uh, Twelve individuals have tested positive, and under uh, University of Wisconsin rules, uh, athletes who test positive will miss 21 days, while coaches are quarantined for 10 days. That that pretty much wipes out Wisconsin's Big Ten uh, schedule, at least through the month of November. It's unclear what that will do to the rest of the Big Ten, but it really shows just how inane the uh, college football season is. Uh, we've seen major shutdowns at other universities as well. Uh, players uh, sort of, not sort of, but LSU lost uh, multiple players uh, due to positive tests and people coming down with COVID. So um, it's really just uh, players not being paid and colleges making millions off of it. But uh, what on earth would the NCA say about that? Um, next from the Wall Street Journal, Leon Black, uh, the head of Apollo, has uh, opened up a little bit more about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. He claims that um, Epstein provided uh, legal work and estate planning work for him, uh, and that was um, the uh, reason for the $50 million payment. Of course, that's $50 million paid to Epstein after his 2008 conviction for soliciting prostitution of a teenage girl. Uh, Black says that uh, all, there's documentation that the work was performed and that that uh, documentation and work has been vetted. Nevertheless, the board of directors mandated that an independent investigation be uh, uh, engaged in from the Dechert law firm into Mr. Black's business with uh, Epstein. Uh, Black said he had asked for the review and is cooperating fully. It's certainly a black eye, and given the uh, the number of uh, pension funds and public employee funds that do business with Apollo, you have to wonder. And then finally, Wells Fargo, our lead story, hits their lowest share price since 2009. They just can't seem to get it together and do anything right since their scandal. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow.